guys, I'm uh, just going to give, give you guys a quick intro to what you're going to be learning soon with Plus Design Build, why you will learn it, and maybe a little bit of insight. So guys, I've been working for 35 years as a builder. Uh, a quick bit of background is when I actually did my carpentry course, I remember thinking, why the hell am I learning to build a mortise and tenant joint? I'll never use it again. And you know what? When I actually look back on it, I think it was foolish for me to think because learning to cut across the grain in small increments enabled me to you know, cut hinges out or every day I used something, I built upon the, the things that I learned at TAFE. And I think it's really important to, to value what it is you've learned even if you're not going to use it tomorrow or today on the site. And you guys are learning SketchUp, you might be thinking, why do I need to learn you know, a 3D program when I'm a builder? Well, look, guys, I'm going to give you some quick examples and show you some jobs that are, that are being done and, and how uh, builders are utilizing it to get efficiency, uh, better customer communication, customer communication, and better subcontractor communication, and how to solve problems before they actually arise on site. Now, I've just drawn a rectangular prism there. It could be construed as a slab. It could be anything. I'm just, I'm just going to make this a group. Right now, making it a group is one thing, and then creating frames and and walls and everything like that is kind of slow in SketchUp, and but it's a really important thing to learn. It's just like a mortise and tenon joint. The most difficult thing to learn inside of SketchUp that, that a lot of us take for granted after we've been using it for some time is navigating. And you can see on my mouse what I'm actually doing there, and I can navigate seamlessly. And I kind of sometimes go, "Oh, why can't someone get that?" Well, the truth is that it isn't as easy as it looks because it's a matter of where you place your mouse and what you do with it and how to scroll. You'll notice I'm pushing two buttons at the same time there or I could be pushing shift to enable me to get around because it's so important to be able to get exactly to the place that you want to get so that you can continue to detail that project. Right? I say without a doubt, the hardest thing to actually do inside of SketchUp is to organize it correctly to ensure we don't get sticky geometry where we said, oh, well, let's put a maybe a little slab out here and we want to move it and before you know it, SketchUp starts to do this. So organizing SketchUp and making it so that you have groups, components, tags, scenes and styles is very difficult to stay on top of and you might find it a little bit overwhelming and that's what I'm going to show you now is how we go about solving these issues. So if I drew a rectangle here and I, and I didn't want to create a group and component, you'll notice here we have no tags. If I use the plus spec tool to do that, I can go and click on a slab and I can choose does it want to be below the points or above the points. And if I wanted to find out more, I could simply hover over the help here. But I'm just going to do this. I'm going to make this slab above the face points and I'm going to click submit. And what it did is it created a concrete slab for me with all of the details in here. So footing details and everything like that. But you'll also notice on the right hand side in my tags, I now have floor, right? And if I click this and I turn my concrete off, I can see my reinforcement inside of it. It's all grouped together and it doesn't get sticky so that you don't have any problems. It's organized. And as I go into drawing walls, uh, you can use up here, you can create keyboard shortcuts. I created one for walls here. I'm gonna have a masonry veneer wall and I need it to step down this distance here. So I can actually choose the material that I want to put on there so I can quantify it. So you can see I've got uh, Austral Murray Grey and I've got plasterboard and I've got insulation, termite barrier, vest pole, uh, and if I wanted to add skirting, cornice, and all of those type of things, very, very quickly I can add these things to my list. I can also set the step down on my wall so it works for my bricks. So external, clad step down, if I hover over it here, you can see this is telling me that I'm going to create a step down here. And I'm going to say 86 millimeters here. And I'm going to go submit. And I'm just going to quickly create two walls. One here and one here. Okay. And now those walls are stepped down to the slab there so that it's actually as we build it. And you'll also notice that now I have walls in my tags. And I actually have quad in there as well, which would be part of the roof. And there's a lot of other things that are starting to happen. Now, this is organization. If I went to see all, it also added my skirting in there for me, my jib rock and my cornice there for me. And all of those parameters can be changed inside of the wall tool. Now, if I actually said, let's do a takeoff of this model, not only has it drawn it, it has quantified it. And this is really what helps you create a quote. 
So I have my pest control there and it's telling me how many lineal meters of uh, term guard home barrier I have and I've got 5.14 meters. I have slabs and footings, inside of there I have reinforcement, 200 by 200 mesh that tells me how many square meters or how many sheets that I'm going to need and if I went to my framing, it's actually going in and telling me common studs, I've got 8 common studs cut at 23.35 out of a 2.4 length. It's telling me everything that I actually need there, bottom plates, common studs, blocking, everything that's required to build it and that's so helpful because not only is showing us what we have to build, but it's telling us how much of that product we have and we can now associate um, trades and suppliers to those products. And the name of the game when you're building is, I need to know exactly what I'm going to be building, how I'm going to build it, and what I'm going to do to ensure the customer understands what they're going to get for their money. And that's what SketchUp does and Plus Design Build makes it easier. Now I'm going to quickly go and have a look at a couple of jobs. This is a project uh, that's been created and as you can see it's quite a difficult job to build. It's all pitched on site and so on and figuring out how this would all go together to enable us to tell the subcontractors, the carpenters to put things together, the bricklayers, where the footings are going to go, where all the load bearing points are so that we can ensure that the building will stay erected over time and to ensure that we can do it without problems because what we're actually doing here is we're virtually building a project. And once we virtually build a project, we can iron the bumps out and understand in our own heads what it is, but more importantly, we can show everyone else, including the client, what we're going to deliver. Now, let's have a quick look at, at, at maybe an export of the model. So what this is, it's a layout drawing, guys, that it was exported with one click that automatically dimensioned the top plate because obviously being on a rake, the 450 stud spacings aren't going to be the same on the rake. So what this has done is to mention that. And this is a tool that's inside a plus spec that automates this for you. And you're also going to get outputs that tells us wall number one has sill trimmers at 1543 long, cut it out of a 1.8. All of this information is so important to enable us to do it. Because if any of you guys have actually been on site and chalked out a wall on the floor and measured off chalk lines, you'll realize how long it takes to get these measurements and time is money and the quicker you can get a job done and more efficiently you can get a job done the more profitable you're going to be and staying profitable is the key but SketchUp can also be used for a lot of other things this is a site layout on a six acre property um, and we could be used to look at different things about the project and the riparian areas and and contours of the project so it's not just for construction but utilizing it with a tool such as Plus Design Build enables us to get more out of every single day and be able to communicate better with our clients. So guys, have a play with it. Learn the important things. If you're not aware of how to navigate correctly, you really need to learn that before you go too much further. But then learning how to utilize this Plus Design Build tool set to set you up to be an efficient builder that's a great communicator, that'll mean that you become more profitable earlier in your process and before you know it you'll very very quickly become the preferred builder in your area. Now we're specifically talking about residential but whether it's commercial or residential construction you can still utilize these tools to ensure that you do it. And guys maybe a really good thing for you to see is maybe a, a demonstration model something that's already been created. So what I did is when you first open Prospect you'll come up with this toolbar However, if I click on this question mark, it'll bring it up again. And you'll notice you have self-support there. Help and support, sorry. And you can check out example models. So if you click on the demonstration model, uh, I don't want to say what I just drew, so no. Uh, no. And what it will do, it will actually open up uh, a model that's been pre-drawn. And this helps you understand a little bit from maybe a sales perspective, how do I sell a house? How would I show this to a client? And you can render these up with, with a whole heap of tools and you'll, you'll notice if you follow the Plusbeck YouTube channel, you'll, we'll show you how to do more. But let's look at this from a builder's perspective and we're going to look at the structure here. And we're going to have a look at the project and more about the project right into detail. Obviously we can create elevations and whether they be black and white or color, uh, we can update our model and we can also quantify it within a click of a button and understand what it's going to cost. But there's more about even such a simple project like this. We've got bathroom designs. How do we put wall-hung toilets on there? What is the 
uh, issues that can be associated with it, and we can look behind and find problems. And you'll notice that that wall hung toilet is actually sticking through the wall. These are things that cost us a bomb on site and make us look bad in front of clients. It's really important that we try and look through projects virtually and virtually build them before we actually build them to actually save us some money and time. And if we let's go and have a look at this whole project, you'll notice it has decks in there. It's got split levels, bearers and joists, uh, right down to uh, site plans and slab plans uh, that you can see we've marked out the locations for toilets and penetrations throughout concrete to ensure that everyone is getting things right before we start the project. And we would export these drawings and send them to council for approval, but we also might build them so that we can use them for joist layouts, frame layouts, wall layouts, and everything else that's available to us via the use of SketchUp. And this is exactly the same model, but put into a frame layout. And if we actually looked at it in an overview, we're just looking at the frame. And if we wanted to break our walls down wall by wall so that we could actually build them, we have frame details. And to get to this, guys, once you've drawn a wall, if you click this button up here, Frame Panelization Tool, it's going to change your model. And it's a good idea to go File, Save as Framing Model so that you can actually start to build a project whether you're going to prefab that project or whether you're going to build it on site, it's a really good thing that you need to understand. You know, how to go to Trusses work, where is the load bearing point, and you'll find that Plus Design Build does the majority of this for you, and you're just putting input in. As you move forward with your business, you would probably employ someone to help you with your books, an accountant, and someone to model as well so that you can concentrate on your customers to ensure that you're getting the maximum out of your construction company as far as efficiency and communication and become a profitable builder. Guys, I look forward to hearing your feedback. Don't forget, inside of every tool, and it's probably the most important thing I can say to you guys, is inside of every tool, you have a tutorial to show you how to use that tool. You also have access to a forum, and when you click that, it will take you to a forum and you can ask questions. It's a good idea to actually uh, get involved in the forum and have a little TAFE section there where all you guys can talk together, help each other out on projects, and hopefully ace your, your builder's course, uh, and you know that'll make us all happy. All right, guys, thanks for your time. I look forward to catching up for, to you in the future. No doubt you'll see me over the next year or two. Cheers.